Alright, I think it's about time I should make an updated Light Medica tutorial, considering I've discovered a lot of features that I didn't know how to use previously, and some of them are quite useful, especially ones that a lot of you have been asking about in my previous tutorial. But before we get started, for Optifine users, you're going to want to go to Options, Video Settings, Performance, Turn Off Render Regions, and possibly also turn off fast render. I just have it off so it doesn't cause conflicts. And then once you've done that, you should be good to go. Now that you're in your world, the first thing you're going to want to do is press M. Basically just to make sure that the mod is running. It brings up the main menu and everything. This doesn't really get used overly much because there's keybinds to take over this process. Exit out of there with escape. Now go M plus C to bring up the config GUI. Only thing I've changed in the generic tab is the amount of pickable block slots. The default tool item is a stick. You can change that to whatever you want. Info overlays I have not changed at all. Visuals I have set render block as translucent to true. And schematic overlay enabled to false. Nothing else has changed. Colors I have left as default. You can change those to whatever color you want. Hotkeys, I have bound execute operation to numpad 4. It's a very useful key. I would highly recommend binding it to something. Other key I've changed binding for is toggle translucent rendering to numpad 7. It just allows you to go from, well, quick switch from having translucent blocks to having it look like it's just a normal block in the overlay. Next thing you're going to want to do is grab whatever tool you're using or that you've selected. Mine's the stick, which is the default. You can change through whatever functions it's doing with control and scroll wheel. You can also change what key it uses instead of control in the same GUI as before. And then let's come over here to where I've made this random assortment of blocks. Next thing for creating the selection, M and S to create an area selection manager. Go new selection, call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it testing for this purpose. Now make sure before you exit out of this that you don't click on this because if you click on this, watch, it's selected at the moment as highlighted. I click on it, it's no longer highlighted, meaning it's no longer selected. Make sure it's highlighted before you exit this. Exit out of there. Moving on to the actual selection process. Press M and A to create these two selection boxes. First box is the origin point of the schematic. This just allows you to rotate the, the schematic a bit easier when you're actually trying to position it later on. So I would recommend trying to get it as central as possible if you can. And now to move these boxes, you can use Alt and Scroll Wheel. Or if you've changed the keys for nudging it in the GUI, you can do that. But for now, I'm just going to use the Alt and Scroll Wheel. And to select the next box, middle click with your mouse. You can also rebind that in the GUI, which I did in the previous tutorial. And then I reverted it now because it's much easier this way. Alt and scroll wheel that down to the first corner you want it in. So I'm going to put it down here. And then to select the uh, to make the other corner of the box, just simply right click. And there you go. There you go. You have a box. And you can shrink and grow the size of the box just using alt and scroll wheel yet again. And you can just do that no matter what direction you're facing. It changes the size of the box and if you swap what box you've got selected in there it changes the positioning as you can see most of that's no longer selected take that back down now once you've done this press control and s to save it hit save and you should get a new file down here 
Now you've done that, go back to M and S and click the negative or dash to remove it from the array selection manager. And as you can see, it's gone. All right, now you've got your selection saved. You're gonna bring it back up by pressing M and P to make get up the manage schematic placements. Click on show loaded schematics, load schematic to memory, and then find what you were using, which is testing. Load this up. And there you go. There's the schematic. Gonna make sure you change from area selection to schematic placement. Alt and scroll wheel to move it into the position you want. There you go, schematics in place. Now, if you've bound the execute operation, you can from here change the function to paste schematic in world, press the key you've got it bound to, and as long as you're in creative mode, it works. Just to prove my point, I'll go to survival mode, and I'll try and paste it again, and nothing will happen. Pressing the same button, and nothing's happening. Back to creative. And there we go. Another few things you can do for this. Press M and L, and you get an entire material list for all your items in the schematic. And if you bring it back over here, put it right over the same spot. If you've got a block missing or something, you can press M and V for the schematic verifier, start the verification, it'll find whatever blocks you're missing or something, click that, and it should show you exactly where the block that is missed is supposed to be. See right there is supposed to be gold, put that there, M and V again, start verification, nothing comes up. Nothing in wrong, wrong states, extra blocks or missing blocks. Same thing happens again if you go in here and place down an extra block. M and V again, start verification, extra blocks, and there we go. Shows that there's an extra sandstone block. M and V again, and it's gone. M and L also tells you this, but this doesn't really help because it's not actually part of the verifier. So there's the schematic placement. All done. Now I'm going to go through a couple of other extra features that are also in this. As you can see, the entire schematic is loaded at the moment. Now if I hold M and press page up or page down, it changes what layers are being loaded. And let's go to single layer. Oop, forgot to let go of M before I did that. So now if I press page up or page down, it changes what Y level is being rendered which helps a lot when you're making stuff in survival. If for some reason you ever need to reload your schematic, if it's bugged or something, just press F3 and M. It must be done in that order, because otherwise, if you do M then F3, it'll either bring up that or this, and it just doesn't work very well at all. Another few things that are useful, if you press dash on the numpad, if you have one, it brings up the configure schematic placement where you can move it to player, rotation, change the placement origin, mirror it if you need to, and then there's also the material list schematic verifier. You can lock the schematic so it doesn't do anything else. Ignore entities if they are already, if there were any entities captured in there. And a few other things, if you press M and R, it toggles all rendering of the mod except for the windows themselves. So you can still access the menus, but you just can't interact with anything. Press M and R to bring that back again. If you just want to hide the schematic, press M and G. As you can see, the blocks are invisible, but the schematic is still there. M and G again to fix that. Something else that exists, if you press Alt, it shows block states. You can turn that off by pressing M and G, M and I, sorry. 
and just to toggle that back on again, M and I again, obviously. And then to toggle your tool on and off if you're using a block or something like that, just press M and T and the tool is disabled. M and T again to fix that and that's done. One quick thing I want to go over before doing the shader settings is the last key that I haven't mentioned that I bound. So what it does is it changes the blocks from translucent to looking like real blocks. Just to show they are still fake blocks, I'll just run through them. As you can see, they aren't real. Press 7 again on the numpad and they're gone. Okay, for setting your shaders to be able to be used, as you can see, this is not with shaders on. Let's go escape, options, video settings, use VBOs to off. Now quickly before I do the other parts, I'm going to turn my shaders on. As you can see, now my shaders are on. Go to the config menu with M plus C, go to visuals, come down here to schematic overlay model outline, turn that to false and also schematic overlay model sides to false, just to make sure it all works. Escape out of there, and you can see that this is all working with shaders on. Which is also nice, but sadly, it doesn't go transparent. I'll use my key to make it so it goes to solid blocks, and it doesn't look like it changes at all. Only the outside box changes. There's a couple things I almost missed out on putting in this tutorial as well. Things like the delete function, which I will quickly demonstrate with an area selection. Call it testing again. M and A, select the other box, put it in position. Let's just come over here, bring it up a little bit once I put it there. Bring it over to about here. Nope, there. And gonna use the execute operation again. That's not on delete, that would help. There we go. So you just go through piece by piece and it deletes it. Simple as that. Another thing I almost missed is the fact that when you're loading up schematics, you sadly can't load up um, Schematica schematics because it'll just say failed to load the schematic. I am unsure of a way for you to be able to load these currently, but I do know that you can just open up a 1.12 world if you still got Schematica 1.12 or whatever version. Paste that schematic in there. Move that world into 1.13 and then copy that with Lightmatica. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and possibly learned something new about Schematica or how to use Schematica better. I stream on Twitch almost every single day. Link is in the description. Once again, thanks for watching. Ciao.